Good morning, Rabbi Isai. Get to work. New week, new subject, new gishmak. So there are certain halachas that we possibly cannot go through one whole year of not having in the halacha shurim and yeshiva space of it. And this is definitely one of them. I think this is one of the only halacha shurim that we repeat year after year, I think. And it's for good reason. You know, there are certain shailas that people know, there are certain shailas people don't know, and there are certain shailas people don't want to know. This is one of them. I remember giving this shay in a uh, Hasidic shtibel, and one of the guys came over to me afterwards and says to me, Rabbi, that was a great schmooze, but I cannot go home and tell my wife. So why not? She's going to make me sleep in the bath. There's no way I'm coming home telling on these halachas. There are certain halachas that people just don't know. You tell them, they're like, Kavaldik, let's keep it. Certain halachas that they do know. Certain halachas that, no, just do me a favor, don't tell me those ones. I can't keep those ones. They're like sensitive halachas. Like, no, no, no that, that, that one's too difficult for me. That I can't do, right? right? Mm. Even though it's as homer as everything else, if not more, what? It's not stark. It's not stark. Okay. So let's discuss it. Be'ez HaShem Rabbi this halacha is almost what I call, although it's not really, but just to give you a, a slight definition. Can you imagine, can you imagine walking on a tightrope? You're walking on a tightrope between Twin Tower Zatzal number one and Twin Tower Zatzal number two. There's a tightrope between them and you're walking. Very possible, if not vada, you're going to fall off. What are the chances of surviving such a thing? Very, very low. Sometimes, you know, people come along and say, but he says it's okay. Oh, could be, unless, if, you know, if he's your rov, we'll discuss that maybe a different time, I've had to deal with Kvali Hapsak. But I'll upon him, when you're dealing with the Shaila, that the Gedoyle Poiskim have paskin something, it's very hard, I mean, people do this, but it's very hard to say, yeah, but he's Makel. Who's he? Oh, there's a rabbi over there, don't even know his name, never heard of him. Rabbi said, we're going to discuss what we call a sensitive halacha today. And that is the Shaila of the wet wipes, baby wipes today. It is a world war on baby wipes, Rabbi Isai. It is. You're waiting for this shit. There is a world war on baby wipes about to take place. It's not much of a world war because when you ever have a world war, you have two sides and they're fighting equally. There's not much of an equal sides over here, as we will see, Beis Hashem to fight. It's very, very simple. It's brought down in the Gemara. It's brought down in Shulchan Aruch. Anybody, you know, I remember when I had a koil a number of years ago in Galigola. So before we started, the halachas of dosh. They're like, ah, oh, baby wipes, let's go. Now we're going to matter it. I said, no, no, let's not talk. Let's learn the sugya from the Gemara. Like, like you learn a sugya in halacha, right? You don't just open up a Mishnah You open up a Gemara. You open up the Rishonim. You see the Achronim. Then you see the Pidale Poiskim. You see the Eindika Poiskim. Let's decide after that. As far as I remember, we had about 30 guys in koil. As far as I remember, every single one of them after the halachas were like, ah, I think it's a problem. I think they learned the sugi from the Rishonim all the way down to the Gedolei Poiskim. So let me give you some background about Isai. Many of you are familiar with the Gemara in Shabbos, Daf Kuf Yud Aleph Amad Aleph, where the Gemara tells us about a famous sugi, Musukhraisa Dunuzaisa. What does that mean, everyone? Right? Famous words. For most people, it sounds like it's a Chinese word. Right? What does this mean? Musukhraisa Dunuzaisa. Says the Gemara, it means like this. You have a barrel. And the barrel was a barrel of wine. And the problem is, in the days of Chazal, that in order to make a spout, to let the wine flow out, you had to make a hole in the barrel. You had to put a faucet, a tap, inside over there. And that would open and close, and that would, the wine would come out. That was the way of producing and letting wine, you know, to distribute wine, whatever. Now, the problem was, that when you make a hole in a barrel, and you put a tap, a for, like a faucet, in there, how are you going to stop it from leaking, right? Those of you that saw last week, we had a um, iced coffee in this big, it was Mamish exactly that Shiloh, by the way. Mamish that Shiloh. They had, they had this plastic thing that we keep the iced coffee in, with the ice, you know, and you have this plastic spout. So it had a hole in where the spout went in, and it was leaking from there. I'm not sure if you can, whatever, she, 
the cook came and fixed it and, and whatever, fixed the whole situation. But it, it was loose. And because it was loose, the iced coffee was coming out from around where the spout went inside. Right? So what did they do? They used to take material, cloth, right? Absorbent material. And they would wrap it around the tap in a tight way, stick it in, in a very, very stark way. And this way it was tight and the wine was absorbed. And that, the problem was, what happens if it came loose? What if it came out? You have to put it back in. This is the Shiloh, which we're not going to go into all the details, but that's basically what it is. What it is, is you're taking absorbent material. Let's start, Rabbi, say like this. All of us are familiar with Toysus and Ksubas Davov. Toysus and Ksubas Davov tells us, like a and Toysus tells us, when is something dosh, and when is something, um, when is it schita, and when is it malabin? Meaning, we know there are t- two situations that a person can squeeze out a material. You can either squeeze out a material in order to clean it, which is malabin, right? For example, a washing machine, the third cycle that it does is it spins. What's the spinning? It's removing all of the absorbed liquid from within the material. That is schita. Which schita is that? Schita of malabin. Whereas, if for example, you have absorbed liquid in a cloth and you want the liquid, that will be dosh. That will be schita of dosh. Two types of schita. Says Taisus and Ksubas Davov, there are two types of schita. How do you know which one it is? Depends if you want the liquid or not. If you want the liquid to come out, I'm going to use the liquid. Schita. That's the schita of dosh. Because dosh means I take out that which is encased, that was encapsulated in something else, and therefore I use the liquid, I use the item, right? Most of us are familiar with the halachas of schita. Everybody knows you can't, for example, your sleeve gets you know, stuck in the water, whatever it is, you can't squeeze out. Everybody knows. Everybody knows you can't use a regular toothbrush on Shabbos Kodesh. These are halachas that everybody grew up with, that everybody knows that you can't use a toothbrush on Shabbos. You can't use toothpaste. That's a whole different child. That's mamachik. But on Kaponim, whenever you want the liquid that's coming out, that you got a shaila of dosh schita. Whenever you're doing it, because I don't want the liquid, but I don't want this beggar, this absorbent material to have liquid inside it, that is considered to be malabin. And therefore, halacha lemaisa, dosh was one of the malachas in the mishkan. It was done in the mishkan. And therefore, it's a malacha on Shabbos Kodesh. The shaila in the Rishonim is, do we say it's a da'oraisa? Because dosh in the Mishkan was not done with begodim, with absorbent materials. So do we say that dosh applies min ha-toyra, nafkimina legabe, if you see someone using baby wipes, do you have to take him to the second story, it's a Mishnah in Sanhedrin, take him to the second floor of the building and throw him off and then everybody has to cheer? Do you have to do that or not? The shaila is, do you have a mitzvah to kill the person? Or do you not have a mitzvah to kill the person that used to using baby wipes? That's really the shaila. If it's a deraisa or not. So how do we pass him? Is it Daraisa or is it not Daraisa? So for those people over here that are writing notes, I'll read you some of the Rishonim, some of the, as they say, you know, they always have a picture, a like partial view of the crowd, right? So this is a partial view of some of the Rishonim that say it's a Daraisa. Rashi, the Rashba, the Rosh, Toysus, the Ran, the Shulchan Urich, Pima Godim, the Shulchan Urich, Harab, Balatanya. Toysus, Shabbos, Fisa, Shabbos, Kavachayim, Chachmas, Nodim, the Heilige Chovetz Chaim, Schus, and you're going to land in the Mishnah Budiya. Which means that we have a list of Quite a few Rishonim, Achroinim, and Gedolei Poiskim that hold Schidas Begodim is a Daoraisa. It fits into a regular Daoraisa, and therefore a person is going to be Chayiv Skila if he has Edim and everything else that's included in that. So that is the Shaila over there. Now, this Shaila is, by the way, people don't even have they think it's like a new Shaila. It's brought down the Halacha Lamaisa, Simon Shinchov, Sid Yudzain. I'm sorry. Chovish a pop group of kakshal pishton listom nekov. That's exactly what we're talking about. You've got a chovish, you've got a barrel that stuffed up the, the faucet, the tap area, with a absorbent material. By the way, in Eretz Yisrael, you see that very much. If you look at the metal pipes, sometimes coming out of the walls, sometimes going into the you know the the, the main area, sometimes they take pe- there are strings of flax and they they tie it around in order to put it in tighter. It's true, right? In, Amer- in Eretz Yisrael, I said. I said in Eretz Yisrael. In America, Nishtar Zazach. It's true. They have in America also. That it went to the Golden of Medina also. It went to America. What can you do? Anyway. All right. We'll discuss the plumbing machlekas afterwards. Although it's a very interesting China. All right, Rabbi Isai. So this halacha, Rabbi Isai, is brought down with Furish in Shulchan Aruch. You look at Simon Yutchas, Sif Yutchas, Simon Shenchov. It's very, very clear that he talks about this shaila. 
He brings different sheeters. La Alok and Amaisi goes backwards and forwards. We're not going through the sugar, the base he's a famous rivet. And we're going to go through some of the things that the Shulchan Aruch talks about. But Avadi, he says, if it is a psik resha, there is no question whatsoever. One of the first shaylas, Rabbi said, let's, let's, le- let's deal with some of the shaylas and then we'll talk about baby words. We'll have a demonstration. We'll give you some of the reasons that people say it's mutter. We'll see whether or not they have anywhere to stand on. And Be'ez Hashem will leave the Olam with their decisions. First thing, Rabbi said, Shabbos Ayin Heim and Aleph Ain Disha Ella Begedule Karka, which means Dosh, which is what we're dealing with, right? We're dealing with Schita of Dosh, is only by Gidule Karka, which means things that grow from the ground. If it doesn't grow from the ground, there's no Dosh the Oraisa. There may be Dosh the Rabbonon. So, for example, your toothbrush will be Dosh. But it will be Dosh Durabonon. That's the Durabonon fire. That's also very hot. Now, it will not be a Daraisa because it's not absorbent d- Gedule Karka material. That's why it's not a Daraisa. It's a Durabonon. But when it comes to a, a Shaila of Dosh, which is what we're dealing with, the Gemara tells us clearly, Endisha Ella be Gedule Karka. So we have to know if our baby wipes are considered to be Gedule Karka or not. Another thing as well, Right, we know, and again, we haven't got time to go through the whole Indian, but every malacha on Shabbos has to have a constructive purpose. If there's no constructive purpose happening, it's a dis- destructive per- situation, that's a durabonon. It turns it from a derisa to a durabonon. The reason for that is because everything in the Mishkan was done with a constructive purpose, not a destructive purpose. So therefore, the priest can say the shayla. What if you have dosh schita, where the liquid is holich li'ibud? That means it goes to waste. No one's using it. That is the Shaila. So those are the two major things we have to discuss, right? Let's go. We're going to go through them one by one, okay? Let's do, uh, let's talk about baby wipes, halacha lemaisa, when it comes to schita. So I have to tell you, there's a lot of Rabbonim that deal with the Shaila. Right? I know many of them personally and I've spoken to them in the past and many people have told me B'Shem Rabbonim and I've spoken to those who are born in this that I never said such a thing. So you have to know if number one, the rabbi that you're quoting actually said it. You have to know who he said it to, what the situation was, what type of baby wives he was dealing with. I personally spent many of my hours of my life in Ashkelon and the reason I went to Ashkelon was not because there's a great beach there, but because there is a baby wipe factory. In fact, the baby wipe factory in Ashkelon is the third biggest baby wipe factory in the world. And they also have baby wipe factories in Kentucky together with the bourbon. Can you believe it or not? They have it over there in Kentucky. They have it. <coughs> okay. So they have these factories all over the world, right? Um, Mamish all over the world. In fact, when I, I actually met them once on an LL flight to New York, they were going on the way to Kentucky to develop one of the new factories over there. We had a whole discussion on the plane because I'm like, you can't get away from me now. I've got you on the flight. You can't go anywhere. So I spent my time in um, Ashkelon. They have a beautiful factory there. Maybe one day we'll get a chance to go there and get a tour that will be Gavaldic. But I'll upon him. Uh, I, I sat down with technicians and people that have spent years and years in university and college and nobody ever asked these people apart from like, hmm, what was the, why, why is the price so expensive? Here they finally have someone that's saying, tell me, how does the baby wipe work? What is the technical details of that? It was, they were so excited to finally share their years of experience and work in university. So these people are the Bikim, they develop, they're the brainstorm behind, they understand baby wipes. Unfortunately, what can I tell you, a lot of the Rabbonim that are dealing with baby wives, I don't know if they've gone to the factory and they know what's going on and they know it's serious of what's happening. Let me, before we begin, Rabbi Isai, begin like this. Right, let's make a very simple thing. I want to give you a list of some of the names and I have chuvas in front of me also from Ksav Yad, from some of these Gedoyle Poiskim that deal with the Shaila. And they paskin that using a baby wipe on Shabbos Kodesh is an Issa Do'or. You should know that um, I was asked in one community in Chutzlar to give a share on baby wipes and I refused. I pushed it, refused. I regretted it afterwards. But I refused because I said, you know, the problem is I'm going to get up there and I'm going to be boom, 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 boom. With all, and I'm going to be going against all the rabbis in the whole city over there. They're going to throw me out and who knows, you know, what do I need this for? So I said, no, I regretted it afterwards. I said, the bunch of them sent me down to the world and I'm going to not allow people to keep Shabbos in a proper way and they're going to be Titans on me, like the Gemara on Shabbos, what's going to be with me? I don't know, I regretted it afterwards. So, Baruch Hashem, afterwards, I was invited by Goodness to Israel of America by Zoom during the Corona time to give a whole Zoom thing on this suga. And it was on Zoom, right? So I could just shut my laptop whenever I wanted. And I gave it to them as I, as I you know, like you're meant to. And, and they said, 
Thank you very much. And they haven't invited, well, whatever. <laughs> the point is that many Gedoli Poiskim deal with the Shaila and Lamaisa, they come up that using a baby wrap on Shabbos is an Issa Da'oraisa. Okay? Who are these Gedoli Poiskim? These Gedoli Poiskim are the Heilige Minchas Yitzchok, the Heilige Dian Petzin, the Rav Ben Moshe, the Dian Fisher, the Evan Yisrael, Rav Yashiv Zatzal. Rav Ozan Shevet Alevi, Marish Shiva, Rav Shaimbek Zatzal, Eimek Kachiva, Rav Nissan Kavelitz and Chodshoni, the Heilige Bells of Dain, Shevet Kahasi, the Hout Tzvi, Machsel Yor, Rav Felt, Megillah Seva, Nishma Shabbos, the Orcha Shabbos, and many Gedalia Poiskin, Rabbi Zabokowitz, also whatever I spoke to as well. So the Shrine is there's a Rav Moshe. They tie in there's a Rav Moshe, right? Many people go around saying, I Rav Moshe's Mekel. Oi, Rav Moshe, Rav Moshe. Go and open up the Chiva. Go read it. Make sure you understand it. Make sure you know what's going on. They, Rav Moshe has a Chuva that he talks about this. Obviously, he doesn't talk about baby wipes. But he talks about some it's a paper that was liquid and you squeeze it, whatever. So Rav Moshe Lamaisa was Mekel. So Rav Reuven, they tie Again, I, I don't know because I never spoke to Rav Reuven myself. They tie Rav Reuven understood that if I was talking about thick paper towels, like the ones that we used to have in Yeshiva, those paper towels that got wet and you go and do something with those, that was what Rav Moshe was talking about. They're not very absorbent. They don't squeeze anything. I want to give you an example, Rabbi Say. This, by the way, I did not bring from home. Because I've been, I've been, you know, accused many times. Oh, you probably opened it up and drenched it with liquid before you came in. So we have Adim, that this is not mine. This was bought from a Choshev Abacha in Yeshiva Space Dovet upstairs. It's a brand new packet. Is this true? Where is he? It's a brand new packet, right? Oh, it's a brand new packet. It's not been opened, right? So you didn't drench it with water and you didn't squeeze it out. Nothing was done with this. Okay, you could try this one at home. Okay. Rabbi said, so we're going to open this out. I'm just going to give you a small example because I'm doing from the top, by the way, because the derech is that the liquid goes down to the bottom. So if I go down to the bottom one, you say, oh, the bottom one. I'm giving you the top one, the top baby wipe, never been opened, right? I'm going to try to do what I can over here. I hope you'll be able to see what I do. We're going to fold it up, right? Okay. I'm just going to give you an example. Wow. Okay. That's liquid. This is liquid, Rabbi Isai. This is liquid. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, Rabbi Isai, we have a lot to do over here. We have a lot to do over here. Okay? Okay, so let's go through it one by one. So the first tiny we have, the first tiny we have on the people that are Makel, they say, okay, it's not Gedule Karka. What's the problem? It's not Gedule Karka. It's a Drabonon. I want this Drabonon. I can be star of this Drabonon, that Drabonon. Loophole after loophole. Vuchuli, vuchuli. So if you're looking for loopholes, I'll bother you. can look for them. But I'll upon him, it's not Gedule Karka. So what can I tell you about that? When I was in Ashkelon, we pulled out some of the material. Bishas Maisa, when the baby wipes were being made. And by the way, in Ashkelon, they don't make one type of baby wipe. They make almost all the types of baby wipe. They're, like just, they're hired by companies like Huggies and Pampers to make all the types of baby wipes according to their specific specifications of each company so they make many types of baby wipes and again not only now to stroll in America there are three other factories they're one of the three biggest supplies in the world of baby wipes so they understand and they told me and they showed me and they pulled out from the machine two different types of material you can look at it afterwards I'll pass it around there are two types of material over here there's the Gedule Karka Right, and then there's the synthetic, the non gadula karka. It's amazing how you can actually feel the difference between one and the other. You'll look at it after as I'll pass it around. You can see that the gadula karka is very, very soft. The non gadula karka is much harder, it's synthetic. Therefore, they told me there's no way, it's impossible in the Metsias to make a baby wipe that does not have a very large amount. Doesn't say how much, because every company has their, their Metsias of how much percentage wise they need of gadula karka corresponding to non gadula karka character materials in order to make it work and obviously the more expensive ones you buy have more Gedule Karaka. The cheaper ones have less Gedule Karaka but everything has Gedule Karaka in it. It's Vade got things that are Gedule Karaka which means the Gemara and Ayin Heom and Shabbos Ain Dishele Gedule Karaka holds at this dosh by baby whites because they have Gedule Karaka. So that is that is question number one that people often ask and therefore there's no Svara to be Makel in that case. It's Vade got Gedule Karaka in that case. One of the big tiners that people have, one of the big tiners, I don't know if we're going to do this, but I don't know if we're going to see this, maybe we can do this one afterwards. This is the big tiner. You had this one before? No, the liquid is on the outside. It's on the surface of the baby wipe. It's not, oh no, I'm not squeezing anything. I'm only taking the liquid on the outside. Of course there's things on the inside. First of all, I want to tell you something. I tried, and I'm still in the middle, and Be'ezah Shanur Abonisham should give me time, 
to make my own baby wipe that would be, you know, distributed around the world, that would be kosher, lekule alma. There wouldn't be a rov in the world that paskins that it also, and I held it's a big zika rabbin. If you want to donate, based off it forward slash donate, you can put the money in there or we'll process the, you know, the orders. But upon I tried to do this. I spent a long time in Ashkelon with the, with the developers. And not only did I sit there and try, we actually made samples. We actually, I was there during the production line, that we made our own samples of baby wipes. Baby wipe for Shabbat. Right, all sorts of fun, fancy scientific words which I don't understand. And, and we try to make different ideas of different things. We have a questionnaire that we sent out to people when we sent them different options. It was a whole mahalach. It got stopped because Yeshiva Space David got born. So because of that, we weren't able to continue. But Beis Hashem, the Rabban will give me time, we'll get there. But I'll on him. You can look at this afterwards. I want to tell you that the technicians I asked very clearly, is it possible to have a baby wipe that has liquid only on the outside? Impossible. If you get a piece of plastic, you could smear it with liquid and the liquid won't absorb. But the moment you have an absorbent material, it's absolutely impossible. So people that tie it, okay, there's liquid absorbed inside. But I'm taking from that which is on the outside, on the surface. Again, I'm not going to do this right now. I don't think it's going to work in front of everyone. But you could try it yourself. Do we have permission to use a couple more? It's okay. 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 It's Beautiful. Okay. I once, <laughs> I once had to give a shit. I'm not going to say where, but I'm even young people love I understand. A place that I can say, you know, I can be a bit more stark than I can in other places. And I, it was on Pcholomoid Pesach. And I gave my Zaj Rosha. I want Pesach because a lot of the baby wipes have alcohol inside them and it's grain alcohol so you can't even use them on Cholamoid the oil were going with sugar how do you know one thing on Shabbos when I asked also on Cholamoid so those people at Taina that you, that's only on the outside I, I say a very simple thing take your baby wipe don't squeeze it take it out very carefully from one corner take a piece of tissue toilet paper doesn't make a difference anything and just rest it on top rest it on top now wait you'll wait there for a very long time because you won't see anything. Now, if it's true that there's liquid on the surface of the baby wipe, this tissue right now should be at least somewhat wet because there should be liquid on the outside. The answer is no, and this is what the technician told me. They make the baby wipe material with such absorbent, so soft, that there's nothing on the outside. But the moment you give a little squeeze, it's able to come out. That, 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 again, you're going to have to do this this one. The minute you give a little bit of a squeeze, all of a sudden the tissue gets a little bit wet, because you're squeezing it, and you're squeezing the liquid from coming out. So people come along and say, it's Eina Meschaven. It's not my Kavana. Really? Shemi Rachim. As I shouted to say Eina Meschaven. You have no kavanas, so why are you using a baby wipe? So tell me, why are you not using regular tissues? All those people that say that. It's not a psigresha. It's Eina Meschavin. All of a sudden, everyone's a bucky in Hilchah Shabbos, and they come up with every hetero in the book. It's not true. And by the way, the people that say that, you have these people, by the way. I have a guy that said to me one time, there's another tiny little hockle, right? I found a whole safer, by the way, once. A whole safer written on Hilchah's baby wipes. I believe the whole safer goes to all the tiny the Mikilim and then knocks them off one by one, right? So all those people that tiny, uh, it's Hilch Leibud! I don't need the liquid. Shaita. I say to such a guy, when was the last time you changed the baby? Um, I don't know. My wife normally does it. <laughs> ah, that's the pshat. Heilach Lehibud means that you don't want the liquid. You're not using the liquid. Rabbi Sai, let's say Belosh Anoki when the base measure, Toyu Vilim Adi But Lamaisa, there's dirt on the baby that we need to remove of. And therefore, the only way to get it off is with liquid. If you take a tissue, it's kainished. It doesn't work. Right? Again, Beis Hashem, Rabbi Sai, Shu'obi Zoycha, Beis Hashem, Be'ito Bizman at the right time to have Gavaldiga family of children, Besiata Dishmaya. And you'll see this on your own that you need baby wipes to get off. The stuff that you need to get off, I'm even your oven. And therefore, that's not going to help you. It's not going to help you do le karka. It's not going to help you. You're completely stuck in this case. Another tiny rabbi says, somebody says to me, a young man says to me, huh? cover that brius. It's covered that brius. What do you mean? The child's dirty. If they take it off, cover that brius. Shemi Rachim. It was a London all of a sudden. Cover the Brias. Cover the Brias, really. It's covered there. It's easy for the parents, not for the child. Oh, what are you meant to do? What do you mean? You take, like the older days, what do you think they did? They took the kid to the sink. You put on the sink and off you. Oh, come on. So the Seda, you have sprays nowadays. You have all sorts of Gavaldi Gazachan that you could use. You don't have to use baby Don't say it's covered that Brias to use a baby because you want to be over an Issa Daraisa, but don't want to admit it because it's a sensitive Allah and your wife doesn't want to know about the Allah. Zalobaya Shali. What can I tell you? So they came out, Rabbi Sai. They came out, Rabbi Sai. I saw this in one of the magazines, the kosher Jewish magazines that go around. Do you like this one? And there was an advert a number of years ago. I have the advert cut out over here. I'm not going to show it in front of everyone. 
But I have an advert, and it says over there, these baby wipes are mutter to use on Shabbos. Amazing. So beautiful to write that in English, right? Because then he sold it over here in the shop. People came over to me and said they started selling it out to Israel. But all they wrote was one thing. Of course, they wrote that in English. Everything else was in Hebrew. But they wrote that in English. Mutter permitted to use on Shabbos. Whoa, 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 whoa. From who? Where does it say? What happened? So I called up the man. You guys are going to say, okay, very nice. and flip over and buy it, right? So I'm like, ha, ah, ha. I'm not letting them get away with this one. So I called up the magazine and said, can you give me the company's number? They gave me the company his number. I said, who was the Ergesha? So they told me, and um, in America, I see the shop, very, very Choshev Poisik, and I said to him, could you please send me the Psak? Can you send me the, because in the advert, they have like a cutout, like partial view of the, uh, of the Haskama of his Heta. It's cute that they give the partial view, make sure his name is prominent, but more than that, you can't really read. So I asked him for it, Baruch Hashem, I printed it out, I have the whole thing in front of me now, and I'm like, hold on a second, that doesn't, why is he written 14 paragraphs for something which they run their very much to use on Shabbos? Because they give, if you use it as Zayn, if you use it as Zayn, if you don't press hard, and if it's a Zayn, whoa, you didn't write that on the package, you can't do that. You have to be very, 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 very careful. So because of that, Rabbi Isai, as I said, you're walking on a tightrope between Twin Tower number one and Twin Tower number two, Zatzal. The likelihood of falling and dying, Hashem Rachim. You've got Gedolei Poiskin, who hold, are there Rabbonim that say it's motor? Could be. But Gedolei Poiskim, Gedolei, you know, Mamish the Gedolei Ado, who are holding Kola Torah Paskin the head, yeah, we have the Chuvas. It's an Issa Da'araisa. So what are we meant to do? What are we going to ask to do? So eight to number one, Rabbi Isai. This is what Rav Scheinberg writes, I have his Ksavya, this Chuva over here, Tov Shin Nun Hei, that he wrote a Chuva, and he says, you squeeze out the baby wipe to come on Yuma, which we're not going into, but I'll upon him, squeeze out the baby wipe before Shabbos. And then, and then leave it, right? Or take it out and leave it out in the, in the outside, whatever, not in the package. And this way, basically, it has no moisture inside it. And if it has no moisture inside it, so you've got the mylar that it doesn't rip, because tissues sometimes rip. It doesn't rip. And nowadays, they have sprays. In fact, I was zoichet to be in Monsi. I was in Wesley Hills in Monsi, staying by Rabbi Santa Shlita's house. And a yid came up to me. He was very, very excited. He was very excited. He was the creator of the baby wipe spray in America. I don't know what it's called, I don't can't remember his name. He was he gave me a whole bunch of bottles to take back, it was Gavaldic. And there's a beautiful spray with soap in it, you spray the baby, you use regular tissues or you use dried out baby wipes, you are for sure good in that case. There's no Shiloh whatsoever. And that was definitely the best eights. Are there other eights of wetting, you know, the baby wipe a lot, or oil baby wipes? I don't want to go too much into all different types because they're all different things. But I want to tell you one thing, and it's a very big thing. People often say, if it's, you know, it's not so wet. And I've heard this from Poiskim. I would, again, challenge your boy say, take a baby wipe, light, very lightly, go over a wooden, one of the tables having the base measures, by the way, is a perfect example. Very lightly, lightly, don't even push hard. Go over it, you will see how wet the table becomes. And then we have a, a klal, teferch amanas la tviach. That means, if you dip your finger into the moisture that went on the table, and that finger goes onto your thumb, and makes the thumb wet, that's teferch amanas la tviach, and that's called mashka, it's called liquid, and it's called schita. Which means, if you take any baby wipe, get any baby wipe you want, and smear it lightly over a table, lightly. I say that for a reason, because people say, oh, don't squeeze. You can put it lightly over the table, you will see. Pick it up with your finger, hit your thumb, it will, guaranteed will be to faire a manas la I have to end, but let me just end with this, Rabbi Sai. You know, there are many tiners. What can I do? I, I can't fight the world. It's not much of a world war, really. It's just, I don't know. But I wanted to say one thing. Imagine the following thing. I give you a beautiful esrug. Wow, is that esrug? Obviously, with the pit in Vashtetzach, it's a beautiful esrug. It's gorgeous. It's yellow. Allah Mailas. And I say to the following, I took this esrug to many Gedoyle Paiskim. And they told me it's possible. They told me it's possible. But I went to a few Rabbonim, and they said, it's okay, you could use it. How many of you, honestly, on the first day of Sukkot, when you're excited to use your Dalad Minim, are going to use an Esrug that most G'daylim hold is Posel Gomu. Even if you're going to use it, you're probably going to find another one to make a bracha. Rabbi Isai, this is a halacha that's brought down in the Gemara, brought down in Shulchan Oreg, G'daylei Poiskim. The Rabbi Nisham shall help us and give us the Gavaldi bracha and the Schos of Shmira Shabbos in all of our lives with the Schos of knowing and keeping this halacha. Have a wonderful day.